our world is in need of, of, of the Hezmet movement in every you know, uh, culture, in every uh, place where Muslims exist, because it provides uh, a, a good model of what in a group and an association of Muslims should look like. Safa Zarzur. Um, I'm an educator and an attorney and a community activist in the Chicagoland area. Uh, for over two decades now, I've been uh, involved in community building. Um, I was a teacher and then a principal of one of the largest Islamic schools in the nation, Universal School, uh, for over a decade. Um, I was the founder and chairman of CARE Chicago, one of the largest chapters of, of the CARE family, a civil rights organization in America. Uh, and I also uh, was the former Secretary General of ISNA, the Islamic Society of North America, the largest uh, Islamic organization in the nation. Uh, as a teacher, I always love and admire teachers. And, um, and uh, to me, I've always, in, in, throughout history, I've found that, that people who have really made an impact on the world have been teachers. So uh, when I learned about uh, Hoji Effendi, um, and learned that he was a teacher and he continues to be a teacher. In fact, I think that's the only thing he likes to be called, a teacher. Um, and, and then I learned about his life, uh, about his humbleness and about his devotion uh, to the work that he does, devotion to the people around him. Um, I really um, have deep admiration to him, uh, for him, deep admiration to what he does, what he has been able to accomplish of building this, this uh, network of people that identify with each other only uh, uh, through their service to their community and only through the good work they do in whatever area. And, and they only focus on serving people. They don't care about anything else. They don't care about titles. They don't care about uh, recognition. They care about serving. And that is something that I clearly, having known uh, and what I know about Hoji Effendi and having read what I read about him, that's what he cares about cares about serving people, cares about making a difference, about building, about bringing people together uh, quietly without any self-recognition, without any expectation of someone praising him or, or you know, he even doesn't like to be in public places, doesn't like recognition. The hazmat to me represents the essence and the heart of what, what Islam is, and that is service and education and, and being positive and being helpful. Um, um, you know, I, I've known uh, brothers and sisters from the Hezmet for a long time. Um, their practice of Islam is, is very middle, you know, of the road, mainstream. Uh, uh, there's no extreme in it. it. It's not, no extreme to the right, no extreme to the left. It, it's just middle of the road practicing of Islam. It's five pillars. And, and its commitment to, to social justice and, and uplifting human beings. And so uh, I would love to, I mean, our world is in need of, of, of the Hezmet movement in every you know, uh, culture, in every uh, place where Muslims exist, because it provides uh, a, a good model of what in a group and an association of Muslims should look like. So when we talk about interfaith dialogue, I'm always um, struck by the position of a lot of Muslims towards interfaith dialogue because to me, the first interfaith dialogue for Muslims is enshrined in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When, when the, you know, the, the Christians of Najran came to the Prophet sallallahu and he received them in his own masjid and he, he received them as his guests and he spoke with them and the Quran is clear about talking to him about 
you know, choose the best ways and means to discuss with them. Um, and, and so it's not an issue that's foreign to us. Uh, yet somehow over the years, Muslims have managed not only to make interfaith dialogue as a foreign subject, but even as a subject that, that is somehow suspect, that anybody engaged in it somehow is either weak in their iman or somehow um, selling out or somehow they, there's always this, this cloud of suspicion about anybody who wants to engage in interfaith when in reality it is at the heart of our faith because the Quran says وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam that we have given karama to all of the children of Adam. He didn't say to Muslims. And he asked us, you know, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, rahmatan lil alameen. He is mercy to mankind. He is not mercy to Muslims. So the idea becomes, and especially that, you know, the Quran has more than one third of it talking about other people of other faiths, particularly the people who share with us the scripture and the, and the divine origin of their faith, and have encouraged the, us to always uh, be in dialogue with them and talk to them. So to me, interfaith today is, in my mind, returning to what Islam has asked us to do in the first place. And Islam asked us to do it in the first place because there is no other way for our world to exist in peace and to prosper without it. I mean, we know the Quran said, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا That if he wishes, he would have made you into one nation or one ummah. And he didn't. Um, and as a result, we must reach out, especially to people who do have more of fabric that originates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do have uh, uh, care about the world, about its well-being. And so coming together with them, discussing with them, trying to find what is common between us and how we can all together work to build a better world uh, and more peaceful world. I mean, that, that to me is at the heart of Islam. That is the essence of what Islam is, and we as Muslims should embrace that, not run away from it. We need to embrace that and, and, and support it and be involved in it, and I appreciate that the Hizmet has very early on um, understood that and practiced it in a very beautiful way. If I have to describe the efforts of Hizmet in the field of education, as an educator, again, uh, who has been involved in, in, in the running of one school, one Islamic school, um, I can tell you that the effort in my mind is nothing short of a miracle um, uh, on many levels. One, on, on how fast those institutions have been established. Normally, they require a lot of finance, a lot of effort, a lot of you know, uh, resources that are really marshaled in the case of the Hizmet through a lot of people who are many times are volunteers or semi-volunteers or working on very uh, uh, little salary but putting in a tremendous amount of time. I myself, when I went to Turkey in 2011, had the, the, the pleasure of uh, visiting Al-Fatih University, for example, talking to some faculty members. I, I was at awe when I heard that the institution is only, I think it was either a decade or less than a decade old. But it was a first-rate institution in every respect. You know, I am someone who has studied, got my bachelor's, master's, and, and juris doctor degree in the United States, familiar with universities. I, I, I worked as an adjunct professor at Loyola Law School and familiar with what educational institutions are and how hard it is to put them together, uh, to see the, the establishment that was uh, al-Fatih, and then listen that it was only a decade old, yet had every element of what a first-rate higher education institution should look like. I also visited a couple of the high schools uh, and, and spoke directly to the teachers and the students uh, to hear the teachers talk about the fact that the school and the children are their family and the fact that some of them leave at 11 at night uh, to go home, uh, to hear the students say that you know that that this is their family that they're they're the, the the other students in the school are the people they go to when they have issues and problems and they are the people they go to for support when they face any issues in addition to that receiving a first rate education that enables them to compete at the highest levels to go to the best universities not only in turkey but worldwide 
uh, to see all of that as an educator, I, I really cannot describe it in any other terms than it's a miracle. And it is what we need. It really is exactly what we need as Muslims. We need a lot of education, a lot of first-rate institutions that do two things. One, raise that generation of Muslims who focus on production, on positive energy, on giving back, on serving, on, on learning something for the sake of Allah and then uh, doing something useful with it to benefit humanity. And that's really the, 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 the um, vision and the, and the philosophy of, of, of Hizmet. So as an educator, I wish those schools would be in 210 countries, not only in 168 countries, and that there would be you know, thousands and thousands of them because they are very important. As a Muslim, it always have um, impacted me a lot to, to hear uh, a simple hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about that if you, if you are in the affairs of your, of your uh, brother, whether you are able to accomplish what they need from you or not, it's better for you than to, to do i'tikaf in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for two months. And it always struck me, you know, uh, the value of service and the value of helping people who need help, and whether it's because of disaster or whether it's because of, of poverty and the circumstances they are in. And to me, it is really the, the direct translation of Islam. You know, so on a, on a ritualistic and theological level, Islam is aqidah and ibadah and... But on a, on a practical level, day to day, Islam is service. Islam is helping others. Islam is stepping up when someone else is in need because of a disaster or because of their circumstances. And to see Kemsa Yokmo, and actually when, when we visited the headquarters, we were told about, because the name is very unique, and we were told about the name and how it was, it was really the translation or the, the answer or the echo of, of, of someone who was trapped during the, the earthquake in Turkey and, and who cried out, is anybody there, you know, uh, and, and, and that to be taken as the name of the organization in itself tells you the whole story. He says that Muslims should be compassionate, kind, just towards other people, whether or not they embrace Islam. I find those two characteristics of his reading of, of the Islamic tradition, his interpretation of the Islamic tradition, to be quite remarkable. Clearly the work of uh, Mr. Gulan has been to uh, help people think about what it means to be a religious person. And uh, a religious person is first and foremost a person that approaches other human beings with a sense of awe, with a sense of respect, with a sense of wonder and friendship.